Hello and welcome to today's episode of Focus Atlanta. I'm your host, Keisha Lancelin. As a nation, we are plagued with several chronic diseases that affect our families, our health, and our quality of life. Examples of chronic diseases would be everything from heart disease, so there are different types of heart disease, but heart disease is a chronic disease, diabetes is a chronic disease, and that's one that's very prevalent here in Georgia. Um, other examples of chronic diseases would be asthma, so adults can have asthma, children can have asthma, but that's another example of a chronic disease. And arthritis is a chronic disease, so there are a variety of chronic diseases that affect different parts of the body. And so, um, depending on the type of chronic disease, that's going to determine the cause of it. But there's certain risk factors that we know are common to many chronic diseases that we see. So, for example, diabetes, heart disease, we know that obesity, so being overweight, is a common risk factor for diabetes. And we've seen that as our obesity rates have gone up in Georgia, our diabetes rates have also gone up in Georgia. So those are very consistent risk factors. Another risk factor for chronic disease is tobacco use. And a lot of people don't realize the significant impact that tobacco use and cigarettes have on chronic disease. But for example, um, chronic um, tobacco use is a risk factor for heart disease. It's a risk factor for diabetes. Um, it's a risk factor for many cancers. And now with some of our improved cancer treatments, we've got cancers that are now um, considered more chronic disease than acute disease. So those are some of the major risk factors for chronic diseases. The risk factors for many of these diseases are the same. Preventing the onset of these diseases becomes paramount as each of us gets older. It's really a very complex issue. And so there are different ways that we have to approach it. So it's not one size fits all. It's just not one thing is going to be that magic thing that you know prevents or reduces chronic diseases. So our approach is really a comprehensive approach, realizing that we have to do work at the state level, communities have to do work, and we have to really make an effort to touch people where they live, work, play and worship in order to really address chronic diseases and so that's really our approach uh, in the Department of Public Health. Often we hear that our genetics, age or sex play a role in health disparities, but what about the role of race? socioeconomics and geographic location. We know that there are racial differences in chronic diseases, so we may see certain chronic diseases that are more prevalent in African Americans versus whites, or even in uh, Latino Hispanic populations. For example, diabetes is one that's very prevalent in Latino Hispanic populations as well as African Americans. So we do know that there are those types of differences, but then we also know that there are geographic differences. So we tend to see higher rates of certain chronic diseases in more rural areas and that might be related to, act, to access to health care or certain prevention um, opportunities that may not be present in certain rural parts of the state. Um, we also know that there are um, socioeconomic differences that we see so in poorer populations or lower socioeconomic populations we may see higher um, rates of certain chronic diseases and so you know, that's probably a very complicated reason why we're seeing that, but we definitely do see those differences when we look at the prevalence of chronic diseases across Georgia and across the nation. Through advanced clinical research, we are able to find out what ails us as a state and create new avenues to awareness and prevention. A lot of times when you participate in clinical trials, you're actually getting some exams that you normally wouldn't get at your primary care doctor's office because you haven't been diagnosed with something, but it's almost like, it's almost like doing a little bit of your own self-help check with being proactive in your own health. And it allows you to get exams done that make a difference. Every um, demographic has a research um, question that applies to them. Like, you, like, like we, as we know, the issue with children is one thing, um, but interventions that could work in children. You can imagine, for example, something related to a school system that w this would lend itself. Morehouse School of Medicine was founded in 1975 and became an independently chartered institution and the first medical school established at a historically black college and university in 1981. We're one of a kind. We have so many things that we do at Morehouse School of Medicine. When you think about Morehouse School of Medicine, you just think about physicians. 
At Morehouse School of Medicine, we have uh, our public health uh, institution that they do stuff. We got the mental health. We do so much more than what people actually think. We want you to know that when you enter onto Morehouse School of Medicine campus, that you're just not entering a place of business, that you're entering a place filled with love and compassion, respect, dignity. You're entering a place where we're not just looking at getting numbers of participants, but we're looking at making a difference. We're looking at seeking medical advancement, the community said they're seeking medical miracles. We want to make a difference in what the medical professionals are doing. We want to make a difference in the institutes of health. We want to make a difference in letting everybody know that these health disparities that are crippling our community, that we are trying to help find resolutions. We're trying to be a problem solver. So Morehouse School of Medicine is uh, really focused on um, bringing health care to the underserved communities and the Clinical Research Center is aligned with that mission. So specifically we go out into the community, we partner with the clergy such as the Concerned Black Clergy, we partner with school systems and we partner with doctors who are delivering care. We'll be right back with more Focus Atlanta here on CW69. Welcome back to Focus Atlanta. In 2008, Morehouse School of Medicine ranked number three among the nation's community-based medical schools in research funding from the National Institutes of Health. The National Institute of Health, which is the government agency that supports um, cutting-edge research around the country, have made an investment in us in this regard because Morehouse School of Medicine has consistently delivered on bringing quality research to minority patients. So they made an investment as well as the Morehouse School of Medicine administration made an investment, so it's a sort of a jointly funded effort. The partners that are at the table that have signed up to, to be a part of this, we've got the, um, the group that's called the Community Advisory Board, of the Clinical Research Center. Uh, we've got the Community Physicians Network, so these are more the doctors that are part of this. And then we've got the groups of investigators that are part of our broad, what's called the, the City of Atlanta Research Network, uh, the CTSA. So all these groups are teams of people between uh, the patients, the doctors, and the researchers as well as the research nurses. So it's a whole team that have come together and we are grateful for their support. The Clinical Research Center has served as the hub for clinical research at Morehouse School of Medicine since 1996, so as to provide faculty with an outpatient research site uniquely suited to the pursuit of clinical and translational studies in minorities and underrepresented populations. We know that there are certain populations where they tend to have higher rates of certain chronic diseases, and that's pretty consistent across chronic diseases. So when we look at diabetes, when we look at obesity rates, and obesity is not a chronic disease, but it's a risk factor for many chronic diseases. So when we look at obesity rates, when we look at heart disease, those tend to cluster in the same types of populations. Um, so we don't really see, you know, this disease here, this disease there. We tend to see a clustering of those diseases. And it's probably because they're common risk factors for those diseases. So when we talk about obesity rates, when we talk about, you know, tobacco use, when we talk about low socioeconomic status, we tend to see clustering in certain populations. Community members that fo serve as our community advisory board, they've been saying to us, you know, there are times when we want to be a part of this research program and some of the folks that come to us, but they can't all come to the research center. Um, and of course, we know our research center is right there, right, right south of downtown Atlanta, and sometimes people have trouble traveling that far. So they've been talking to us about getting a mobile unit, but you know, these are very expensive endeavors and not easy to come by. So we've really, collectively, with our funding partners and our research team, we've been working at how to get this done. This past December, Morehouse School of Medicine unveiled Georgia's first mobile clinical research unit, the first of its kind that will provide access to individuals in rural areas who would otherwise have difficulties reaching a research center. So a number of our staff have been collaborating with the folks at the Mayo Clinic and they have this mobile unit that was custom developed 
and can actually go out is specifically dealing with research, which is different from the other things that take care of healthcare. So we studied that and developed a plan, and so our team now came up with this model, which is one of its kind because we don't, you know, we put in there essentially everything that is in our research center in terms of exam rooms that are fully equipped. We have uh, exercise treadmill testing equipment. We have ultrasound equipment, things that, and then we have a space that just does specimen processing so we can have laboratory samples. So we really have a way where we can go out there and have a uh, research done, state of the art, bring you know the data back and it's everything is wired and computerized so the data is not is secure comes back to the Morehouse School of Medicine in a secure manner that's what's very exciting for us a rural community is one of those areas where access to health care is very challenging and it's not because you don't have physicians there it's because the practice of the physician may be in Macon but it may be where I live in way rural South Georgia of Macon to be able to get to a physician. I might not have transportation. My socioeconomic hardships may make it where I can't get where I need to go. That's why we have the mobile unit that we have now because it's gonna allow us to partner with those practices in South Georgia, in rural areas. Our goals as a state, one is to make everyone aware of what the issues are related to chronic disease in our state. So I think we have to make the public aware because the public has a role. We have to make employers aware because employers have a role. We have to make um, our faith leaders aware because leaders of faith have a tremendous influence on their congregations. And so we need to make them aware of the important role that, they're play, that they play. We go out and we embrace the community. And how we embrace the community is we attend health fairs that churches have. We also go out and help churches build their health ministry. A lot of churches want a health ministry, but they don't know exactly what it takes to get that health ministry started. So what we do, we go in, and a lot of times you'd be surprised, pastors, because you have to get the head involved in case you want something to really flourish in the church. So a lot of times the head reach out to us and they connect us with their health ministry coordinators. To learn more about the newest advancement in Georgia's clinical research, stay tuned for more Focus Atlanta. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You're watching Focus Atlanta and I'm your host, Keisha Lantolin. The Mobile Clinical Research Unit is a self-contained, handicap-accessible, mobile research facility with state-of-the-art equipment and technology used to conduct similar research to what Morehouse School of Medicine is able to do in its own labs at the Clinical Research Center. So when a patient shows up to do the research protocol, the first thing that happens is obviously there's a way that the information has to be protected. They can sign a consent form. So that whole process is a private thing. It's like you're one-on-one -on -one with your doctor or the investigator. Nobody else can sort of, so we've got these rooms that are dedicated for these interviews. So the, the information can be delivered in a very private manner and confidentiality is preserved. So that's the first thing that happens and then the patient signs a consent form. And then the next thing is sometimes we have to, not sometimes but almost always, the doctor has to do a complete exam. So we have to conduct the physical exam and that's why it's like a typical exam room. And then we run some blood tests and then there's some protocols that would request people to do some uh, exercise training before we put them on an exercise program or ultrasound testing, looking at the blood vessels, all those things. So they're procedure areas, you know, they're like three different discrete areas that are separated so we can conduct these, these um, different um, studies. I think what Morehouse is doing is excellent, you know, and I think that anytime you can take resources into communities that lack those resources, it's a benefit. The Mobile Clinical Research Unit, which spans roughly 30 feet in length, will visit communities in Metro Atlanta as well as key areas of difficult to reach populations in Macon, Fort Valley, Albany, Columbus, and Augusta, Georgia. One of the areas that really has been knocking on our doors uh, for, for many for a while is um, the area around Macon, there's Fort Valley, as well as the area around Columbus. As you go toward the border with, with, with Alabama, there's some very rural communities there 
um, that really we see some of those patients as part of our research that we work on, but we don't capture them beyond that initial time when they're in the hospital at the you know, medical center of central Georgia. So now we're going to be able to go out and, and interact with them. Because we're going to be making a big impact on the fear that people have had where I can't afford to take care of myself. So what we're going to do with that in the rural areas is we're going to go out and we're going to work with physicians in the area to try to help them. Our community physicians network, we have rural practices that are partners with us. So we've already bridged the gap. It's been already in place. Dr. Elizabeth Philly has done an awesome job along with the Community Physicians Network team, Dr. Priscilla Pemu, who is the co-director of that. They have done an awesome job in bringing in physicians from all over to participate. And it actually started because hypertension is uh, one of the number one killers among African Americans. And we started with a hypertension registry where we were able to go out and those physicians in the rural area came and they allowed us to come to their practices and look at how many hypertensive patients they had so that we can provide services to them. We also go out to the broader community across the state of Georgia, specifically around Fort Valley, Macon, Columbus, Georgia, Albany, Georgia. These are locations that have pockets of African-American patients and, and especially we've got these African-American providers who are out in the community and caring for patients so we partner with them in that in that way to bring uh, really advances around research such as heart disease, diabetes, obesity, cancer, HIV AIDS, those conditions that disproportionately affect African American patients. We have very high chronic disease rates in Georgia. Um, our cardiovascular disease rate is probably a little higher than the national rate. Um, we've got very high obesity rates in Georgia, so we're probably one of the most obese states, but that's kind of the whole southeastern region of the country. So when you look at the southern states, that tends to be where we have really high obesity rates is in the south. Because various health disparities still plague our communities, the need to extend research excellence to various areas in Georgia is imperative. Stay tuned for more here on CW69.